Whether you're an interior designer studying for the NCIDQ practicum exam, or you're a practicing designer looking to expand your knowledge on codes and standards, then welcome to the party. In this video, we're gonna be talking a lot of shit. And by shit, I mean ADA toilet rooms. What's up designers, my name is Kelsey. I'm an NCIDQ certified interior designer and the owner of KLSY, a Manhattan-based design studio specializing in commercial spaces. My mission is to help other designers excel in their career while promoting transparency about the industry itself. Today, I'm gonna to be walking you through the most common ADA toilet room codes and standards that you need to know as a designer and for the NCIDQ exam. If you're not studying for the test right now, no worries because all of this information is still applicable to your professional practice. And if you are on the path to taking the NCIDQ exam, then be sure to click the link down in this video's description box to sign up for my exclusive email list where you will receive more NCIDQ exam related information and get on the list for my full study guide course that I will be launching. So without further ado, please step into my studio. Before we jump into codes, let's first discuss why ADA codes and standards are important to begin with. When we talk about ADA, we're referencing the concept of barrier-free design, also known as universal design. This concept references the requirements needed to provide accessible spaces to those with disabilities in accordance with the Americans with Disabilities Act, which is what ADA stands for. Under ADA laws, all commercial and public accommodations must be accessible to people with disabilities. Therefore, designers and architects are responsible for designing buildings that conform to these requirements. Laws and regulations aside, it's important to be familiar with ADA for the simple fact that we as designers have a responsibility to design spaces that are functional and accessible to everyone. Designing spaces that are only able to be used by able-bodied people or any single type of person for that matter is bad design and bad ethics. So let's take this job seriously because to many people, simple space accessibility can affect their day-to-day -day life. With all that said, let's begin. This is a floor plan of an ADA accessible single occupant toilet room or a five occupant fix your makeup and gossip with strangers room at your local bar. There are several factors that make this an accessible toilet room. Let's start with the door. According to ADA guidelines, accessible doors must have a minimum clear width of 32 inches. Be careful because in the commercial world, you will probably be familiar with the standard door size of 36 inches. And although 36 inches is a great way to ensure that doors are wide enough for wheelchair access, the actual minimum required width is only 32 inches. Doors must also have a clear floor space of 12 inches on the push side of the door, meaning there are no obstructions, fixtures, or pieces of furniture. And there must be a clear floor space of 18 inches on the pull side of the door. For front approaches, meaning someone in a wheelchair is approaching the door directly in front of it, 48 inches clear floor space is required on the push side and 60 inches is required on the pull side. There are additional clear floor space requirements for side approaches and more, so I would encourage you to read through the official ADA standards manual, which I will link below in the description box. And if you are studying for the NCIDQ exam, you can turn to page 9-5 of your NCIDQ reference manual to read more about this topic. Our next standard guideline is the 60 inch turning radius, which is equivalent to five feet. 60 inches is the turning radius of a wheelchair. So this 60 inch circle allows a wheelchair to turn a complete 360 degrees without obstruction. This radius can overlap with the clearances of the door swing and bathroom fixtures, but it cannot interfere with any fixtures themselves or the actual door when it's in a 90 degree open position. Another type of clearance you may see and that you will need to account for is the 30 inches by 48 inch rectangle. That's meant to show the size needed for a wheelchair in a stagnant position. Although if you have a 60 inch clear turning space, you can assume that this 30 by 40 rectangle is also possible. This rectangle, however, must not intersect with the door swing to prevent the door from hitting the person or their wheelchair. Something important to know is the proper restroom fixture terminology because no one likes a potty mouth. <laughs> are you guys sick of these dad jokes in this video yet? In the design and architecture world, toilet fixtures are known as water closets and sink fixtures are known as lavatories. So this will be the terminology I'll be using in this video to keep consistency. 
For some reason, every time I hear the word lavatory, it reminds me of the word laboratory. And then that reminds me of when Dexter from Cartoon Network goes, Didi, get out of my laboratory. <laughs> I don't know, I digress. The water closet must be positioned between 16 and 18 inches away from the sidewall, measured from the center line of the water closet. The surrounding clearance must be 60 inches, measured from the sidewall, by 56 inches, measured from the back wall. This clearance allows a wheelchair to approach the water closet without obstruction. The lavatory must have a clearance of 30 inches wide, centered on the sink, and 48 inches deep, measured from the back wall. The two fixtures must never interfere with the other's clearance. However, the two clearance spaces may overlap each other, as shown here. Although not as commonly tested on the NCIDQ exam, it's helpful for you to know the standard requirements surrounding urinals which hopefully for all of you ladies out there is the only time you should encounter a urinal, unless the line for the women's room is too long, then to each their own. Similar to lavatories, a clear floor space of 30 inches by 40 inches must be provided. Urinal shields that do not extend beyond the front edge of the rim may be provided with 29 inches of clearance between them. If you're looking for more NCIDQ test prep videos, then check out my NCIDQ video playlist here. And if you're thinking of taking the NCIDQ exam, don't forget to click the link down below to be added to my NCIDQ study guide course waitlist and be the first to know when it launches. I'll see you next time for more educational interior design content. Thanks for watching and happy studying.